In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, though we've been in ordinary time, back in ordinary time for a couple of weeks now, we've had solemnities on Sundays, so this is the first Sunday in ordinary time where we're back to our green vestments. Green, that's a sign of hope and growth. And so we ask the Lord for those gifts today. We also uh, uh, acknowledge that this weekend is Father's Day weekend as well. So we'll have a blessing at the end of Mass uh, for our fathers. But for now, let's take a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on on earth earth, peace to people of goodwill. We We praise praise you, we bless you, you, we adore you, we we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But The Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart. Let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, 
answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your greatness, kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer, answer me. me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you will also testify. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak it in light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold, sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Secrets and keeping secrets can be tricky, complex things. I remember learning growing up that uh, it was important to keep a secret. In fact, I believe even in some examinations of conscience used to prepare to go to confession, I remember coming across uh, things and questions like, did I keep secrets that I was supposed to keep, right? So um, being told and being taught that keeping one's word and keeping the word of others that has been placed in confidence is very, very important. And we know as well that there are other secrets that definitely should not be kept. Uh, this is something that our church has, to, uh, had to, has had to learn and to remind ourselves of, and many others as well. For instance, sometimes people want to keep things secret, like abuse, but that's not to be kept secret. And then, of course, there's all the complexity of if someone thinks you know a secret and they're trying to get you to let on and you know you shouldn't, how that can be difficult and to do so without lying. So secrets can be these tricky, complex things. And in the gospel today, Jesus is saying, nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. All will be revealed. Now, on a certain level, that's true, of, as he says, of everything, right? At the end of time, at the last judgment, all that we have done and all that we have thought, and whether it was done in public or whether it was done and nobody saw it, it will be made known. Uh, but that's not primarily what the Lord Jesus is talking about in the gospel today. He's not talking about whether or not you managed to sneak a cookie from the cookie jar without anybody knowing once and that everybody will know that at a certain point. If we look at the context here of what the Lord is speaking about, he is speaking about the things that he has said to them in in the darkness or in, in secret, right? What has been whispered to them. Think about how confusing it is sometimes or how puzzling it sometimes seems that when the Lord Jesus does a miracle or, uh, for instance, um, a great sign like the transfiguration, that he tells the person that is cured or in the case of the transfiguration, he told the apostles, don't tell anyone, right? And we, whenever that comes up in the Gospels, which is fairly regularly, it seems kind of odd to us. Why would you not tell everyone? But it was not the time yet. But now Jesus is about to send the twelve out on mission, out to proclaim the good news. And so he's saying, what I have said to you in the darkness, proclaim in the light. What you have heard whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Jesus is telling them, now is the time to proclaim this this information that I have entrusted to you at first in secret. And the call is the same for each and every one of us. Now we know that reactions to what Christ has taught vary, right? The reactions that people have to this message that was entrusted to the apostles and was entrusted to us as well can be different. And sometimes the message that Jesus has given us, the message of God, the good news, this is something that fits with what people want to hear, right? So, for instance, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's very clear that God wants us to care for the downtrodden, care for those who are weak, care for those who are vulnerable or oppressed, right? He says that over and over and over again. He says how much he dislikes and abhors those who take advantage of those who are downtrodden or oppressed or whatever, right? And so this is something, for instance, that is something that we readily want to hear in these days, right? As we think about uh, different peoples uh, because of the color of their skin, perhaps, who have been uh, oppressed or downtrodden over the course of history. So sometimes the good news fits very well and it's something we want to hear. But other times the reaction is different. Other times, the reaction 
it challenges people to change their ways and they don't want to hear it. And so the reaction can be very negative to the preaching of the good news. We see that, for instance, in the prophet Jeremiah in the first reading. That reading starts out by the, the people to whom he was preaching saying, denounce, let us denounce him, let us trap him, right? Because he was telling them the good news. He was telling them that they should follow God himself, but they were following false gods. And so the good news required them to change their ways, something that they did not want to do. And Jesus is preparing the apostles for this reaction in this gospel reading as well. He tells them, fear no one, right? Do not be afraid. He has to tell them that because he knows that they might be afraid and they will be afraid of the reaction they might get when they preach the good news. And this is a very common thing to worry about as, as we hear this message about preaching the good news. It's common for us to feel the same thing. Think of how hard it is. I always give this example. It's a simple example, but I think it's a good example. How hard it is sometimes to, to pray in a restaurant, not that we're in restaurants a whole lot right now, but um, before, you, before you eat. That simple witness, sometimes we wonder, how are people going to react, right? To say nothing of the things that might actually ask them to change their ways, right? So it's common to be nervous about this, to be afraid about uh, proclaiming the good news. But what Jesus is saying in the gospel today is that we must. This is something he is asking of us to do. And the catechism, reflecting on this, says that all Christians must be ready to confess the good news of Jesus. And all Christians then must be prepared as well to share in the Lord's cross because, as he himself said, uh, if they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also, right? And that paragraph in the Catechism goes on to say that doing this, being prepared to proclaim and give witness to Jesus and confess the good news, is necessary for salvation. Which might seem a bit strong, but it's what the Lord is saying in the Gospel today, too. He says, if you acknowledge me before others, I will acknowledge you before my Heavenly Father. But if you do not, if you deny me, I will deny you before the Heavenly Father, right? So how do we, how do we overcome this, this uh, fear or nervousness or anxiousness, perhaps, about proclaiming the good news of Jesus? We see him doing that for the apostles today, and so I want to reflect on a few of the ways uh, in the gospel and also in the other readings that we overcome that fear. One way is by coming to a better understanding of the good news itself, right? We want to make sure that we understand and we know how, how good that news is in order to be able to share it. And part of that is also understanding the bad news. Whenever I think of that pair, the good news and the bad news, I think of a priest I lived with at another parish we shared in the rectory, um, and he would see me sometimes reading the comics from the newspaper first thing in the morning with my breakfast, uh, and we hadn't done our prayer yet, and he said, oh, be careful, don't read the bad news before the good news. And I wasn't so much thinking about the comics, but he was thinking about everything else in the newspaper, right? And in a certain sense, he's very right. He's very right. We want, don't want our reading of the news, whether good news or bad news, to take the place of reading the good news, which is the Word of God in the Scriptures, right? We don't want it to, to squeeze out that or to loom larger in our minds than the good news of God. And so sometimes when there's uh, a lot of negativity in the news, I will even encourage people, you know, it's not that we have to completely separate ourselves from that, but sometimes reducing the amount of time we spend paying attention to it helps balance that out so we're not seeing the, the, all of the, the problems or the reactions in the world as looming larger than the good news of Jesus Christ. So that was his point. Uh, but I think in a, in a sense where um, I differ a little bit from him in that is that we need to understand the bad news in order to understand how good the good news is. And that's what St. Paul is talking about in our second reading today. He's saying through, through one man, Adam, and we know Eve was a part of this too, but he's focused on Adam and Jesus in this particular passage. 
He says, through one man, Adam, sin came into the world, and from sin, death. And he says, this was really bad, right? This was really bad because even those who did not sin experienced death from Adam. There was nothing we could do about this. In fact, not only was this separation from God, which was bad enough, but Paul speaks about it as death reigning, right, over us. Uh, And so not only were we separated from God, but we were held captive in a certain sense by by a foreign power is the way he's describing it. This is a very dire situation. But then he says, uh, if that is the transgression, the gift is different. The salvation is different. The salvation is even more abundant. If through one man's sin and death could enter the world, how much more could life and grace and forgiveness and mercy enter the world as well? The good news is that grace is far more abundant. And it, it makes it better news the good news, better news, to know the dire situation the bad news was. And so that's one of the first ways we can overcome sometimes our fear about sharing the good news of Jesus is by better understanding it, making sure that we have a firm grasp. We know how good it is. We become excited about how good that good news is so that we want to share it with others, so that we, we know how important it is for them to hear it as well. Another thing that we see in the gospel today is is that Jesus tells his apostles is to remember that while there may be suffering now, and that's not a good thing, uh, it pales before the eternal suffering that is the alternative, right? Uh, And so he's encouraging the apostles and he's encouraging us to keep our focus on eternity, right? Because there will always be sufferings in this world, whether we proclaim Christ or not, right? We're not going to get out of that. And so what he's saying is better uh, to experience those sufferings because they are of lesser intensity and they don't last as long than to suffer the sufferings of eternal life, right? Eternal suffering in Gehenna. And so he's encouraging us to keep that perspective before us as well as we can get nervous or anxious or, or fearful about proclaiming the good news. In fact, a little tidbit, I was reading a book uh, earlier in the year. It's it's a novel, but it it had a thought-provoking part in it where it talked about the way we approach suffering. And it kind of made this point. It said, if all we seek is minimizing suffering in this life, we'll find just the opposite, right? We have to keep our perspective farther than that, not just this life, but also the life to come. So there's those two things. And a third thing, and we see this in the gospel as well, is Jesus reminding the apostles and reminding us that nothing escapes God's notice, right? Nothing is out of his care. Nothing is out of his knowledge. He says this about the sparrows, right? The sparrows don't fall to the ground without his father knowing. And we are worth so much more. It's an understatement to even put it that way than sparrows, right? He talks about the hairs of our head being counted. So the Lord sees everything. And, and, and what that means is, again, turning to the prophet Jeremiah, is that he is the one to vindicate us. In the end, he will sort everything out and make things right and bring justice. We would sometimes want to see that in this life, but it works the same way uh, as the transgression, right? To go back to St. Paul. First, there was the spiritual death that Adam experienced, and then came physical death, And the same is true for the salvation that God brings and the making whole and the mercy. First comes spiritual life, and then only for sure in the world to come comes that that physical life, the eternal life even of body and soul. And so the Lord Jesus is giving us these various things today to encourage us to share his good news. And so we ask for the grace to proclaim him and to give witness to him knowing that the good news really is great news, knowing that, uh, that the glory to be revealed in us, if we do so, far outweighs anything we might suffer in this life, and knowing that nothing escapes God's notice, and he makes everything right in the end.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord listens to the needy. He is always ready with help that never fails. We have only to ask, so let us seek the compassion of the one who cherishes even the smallest sparrow. For the church, which dispenses the abundant free gift of divine grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations enslaved by sinful systems of oppression and terror, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who are tormented by fear and worry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women discerning the call to be priests or religious, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have come into the presence of our Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's continue to pray for uh, an end to the pandemic and for all those who are ill uh, with any illness, but especially COVID-19, for healing for them, for protection for those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to continue to pray for Christ's peace and charity and unity to take the place of division, hatred, and racism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, we want to pray for God's blessing on Father Joseph Mwangela as he is installed as the next bishop of our partnership diocese of Katui in Kenya. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for caring for us in our need by giving us your own Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As you're being seated, just a reminder that you can drop uh, offerings in the collection basket in the middle of church. You can also drop them at the parish office or in our virtual collection basket at olpmn.org slash give.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins, sins of, the of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take away the sins, sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder once again that once Mass uh, has concluded and I have a chance to go get my mask, I'll be de- begin distributing communion, going to your place, starting from the back of the church and working towards the front. And a reminder that you're asked to keep your mask on over your mouth and nose until I get to, uh, to you and are giving you communion, and then you can take it off. Um, and a couple other things to mention uh, for this weekend. Uh, first, we've been watching the attendance. People have been asking, are we going to go to our normal Sunday schedule of just one 10 a.m. Mass on Sunday? And watching the attendance, uh, at this point, I think uh, we, looking towards the future a little bit, are going to do that. So starting the first Sunday in July, which is July 5th, uh, we will have just that one Mass at 10 a.m. Uh, the current sign-up, in case you're wondering, uh, goes through the end of June, uh, and so that's unaffected. Uh, and we will still ask people to sign up just so we can have a sense for how many are planning on coming into July. But we will switch to that schedule starting that first Sunday in July. And we'll continue to watch uh, and see. Um, we want, of course, uh, people to feel comfortable coming if they are, are able to. Obviously, those with uh, underlying conditions or of a certain age have, are encouraged to consider staying home. Uh, and certainly anybody who's been uh, exposed to COVID-19 or being tested or has tested positive must stay home and will continue to provide the recordings. But uh, if there's more demand uh, in the future at some point, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll adjust as necessary. But for now, we'll, we'll go to that one mass at 10 a.m. On, starting on July 5th. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we received word that one of our parishioners Richard Anglim, I believe I'm saying that correctly, passed away this past week, uh, and family arrangements have been made. But please pray for the repose of the soul of Richard Anglim and for his family at this time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing for the fathers. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.